Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albano Rhino Beer Review. I haven't had a beer in a while, so it's time to have one. I need to get a new fluorescent uh, ballast. This one, if this light is turned on, if this side is turned on, they both start fucking up. Good thing that I found a $26 ballast that actually works really well. So, we'll buy a new one tomorrow or the next day, or take this one down. It'll be fun. Anyway, today we're drinking a beer that was brought to me by the one... The only Colgate. I'm gonna hold it down here between my crotch, get my balls to go away. Well, no, I'm just, uh. Bottle is a little moist still. It's been sweating since I took it out of the fridge a while back. Uh, this is from the Refined Fool Brewing Company, a brand new brewery in Sarnia. This is Refined Fool's Short Pier. Well, sorry, Long Walk Short Pier. Oh, short pier, long walk. Short pier, long walk. There we go. So it's 8.4% alcohol by volume. It is 100 plus IBUs. And it is a double IPA. Now the regular IPA was 70 IBU. And it really didn't have much of a hop kick. So I'm curious what this is going to be like. Just going to drink it out of the standard pint glass from uh, Niagara College. That ain't a bad looking beer. All in all, that isn't a bad looking beer. There you guys go. Nice and hazy. Nice beautiful amber color. That orangey brown. Nice head. Nice head. Off white head. Very fluffy. Very, very pillow like. Ooh, there is a nice snap crackle too going on in there. Listen to that. Alrighty, what's this beer like? Ooh. That is very, very aromatic. A uh, lot, lots of citrus coming off of this. Uh, lots of tropical fruit. I'm getting, I'm getting lemon, I'm getting, I'm getting lemon, I'm getting grapefruit, I'm getting some mango, I'm getting a bit of passion fruit, I'm getting a bit of pine. Mmm, a touch of cedar. And... Just a tiny touch of apricot, actually. This smells beautiful. Let's try it. Cheers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I should have known that was going to happen as soon as I saw that bubble. As soon as I poured it in that bubble happened, I should have known. <sighs> Fuck. Well. To me, this is a uh, hybrid between an English pale ale like an English style India pale ale and an American style Eng uh, India pale ale. Uh, why do I say that? Because it does come off with so many tropical fruit flavors, but at the same time, it's malty, biscuity, and earthy. Now, 8.4% alcohol and 100 plus IBU. This stuff just slides down your throat. It's scary easy to drink. It's scary easy to drink. Um, people that do not like IPAs all that much could drink this 100 IBU beer and not freak out. And that's a scary notion as well. Some lemon zest, some lime zest, a little bit of grapefruit taste, a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of mango. 
earthy, cedar, cedary, biscuity finish, a bready biscuity finish. No real alcohol burn, no real hop burn. Uh, I saw some people say it was oily and resiny on uh, Untapped. I'm not getting that myself. Not saying they're wrong because I am one of the guys that say that everybody's right. Your own taste palette is your own taste palette. But I'm not getting oily or resiny myself. It is a heavy bodied beer though. It does sit heavy in the gut. But this drinks just so easily. It is not the tastiest IPA I've had. But of an 8.4% alcohol, 100 plus IBU IPA, it is the most drinkable I've ever had with those stats. That being said, I have now drank, um, drank probably about a bottle worth because these are 750s, which again, I think is just a little much. <sighs> I know you're probably saving money buying the 750s and you're getting a better, uh, for the size of brews you're doing and all that, you're probably getting a better profit margin doing the 750s, but it just seems a little much for some of these styles you did. Um, that would be my only complaint, is for some of the styles you, you decided to do, that a 750 just seems too much, and I know 750 doesn't sound huge when you're thinking of a double IPA, but I think a 500 would have done it would have sufficed perfectly fine just to do a pint of them. Uh, when you're doing a 26 or of it, it, it really becomes a sharing beer no matter what. Uh, that might be what they're going for, I don't know. But uh, out of 10, easily buy this again. I would give this an 825. I find it really good, really sessionable. Which is a scary thing to say at 8.4% alcohol. But it is a sessionable, high alcohol, imperial beer high IBU Imperial beer. You could drink so many of these that it doesn't matter. I mean, it is a scary, scary thing when you think about it. Just how easily this beer can go down and just how easily this beer is to drink at the IBU it's at and at the ABV it's at. That is a scary, scary thought. I don't know what brewers are doing lately, but it's it's getting it's getting scary out there. It's getting scary out there, guys. So yeah, eight two five out of ten from the Rhino. Thank you very much, Devin. Thank you very much, Refined Fool. And short pier, long walk. Bye.